<clears throat> Today in class, we started talking about magnetic forces a little bit. We're going to talk about that a little bit more. Um, <clears throat> but the way that we talk about magnetic forces is we talk about force on particles, so charged particles, and on wires. And for both of these, we're using what's called a cross product. It's a way to multiply vectors that gives you another vector. And, and the unique thing about a cross product, like here, A cross B, that's like force in each of these, um, in A and B, <clears throat> is that the product, our force, is at right angles to both vectors, A and B. So here, this force is going to be at a right angle to the velocity and a right angle to the magnetic field. This force is going to be at a right angle to the current and at a right angle to the magnetic field. <clears throat> so, for this we have to use our right hands. Our thumb is always going to be the force. Our middle finger is always going to be the magnetic field. And our pointer finger is either going to be the velocity or the current. It's the direction that charges are moving in. Okay. So. An easy way to remember doing this is if you take your hand and put it underneath the equation right here, and we'll see how well this goes, um, your thumb goes with the force, your pointer finger points to the V, your middle finger points to the B, and you have your other hands here. It's a disturbing looking hand, but you get the idea. If you do that for both of these, when you see these equations, you can always, always, always um, what goes with which finger so you can figure out the direction. Now, another thing about the cross product is um, if vector A and vector B are parallel, parallel, then A cross B is equal to zero. It doesn't work any other way. In fact, another way to write each of these is if we're just trying to figure out how much things are is Q times V times the magnetic field times the sine of the angle in between them. And this is ILB times the sine of the angle in between them. <clears throat> what this tells me is that um, here, when the velocity is perpendicular to the magnetic field, I have my full cross product. But when they're parallel or 180 degrees to each other, it tells me that the cross product is zero, and I don't have any force acting on the particle when it travels with the magnetic field. Or I don't have any force acting on the wire when it goes with the magnetic field. So let's look at just some quick, let's say the magnetic field is this way. A couple quick examples of things that we can do with this, and then we'll talk about it in more detail. So if the magnetic field is going in that direction, and I have a positive particle here that has a velocity in this direction. We use our right hand rule, hold our hand just like that picture has it, point your pointer finger in the direction of the velocity, rotate your wrist uh, to where your middle finger points in the direction of the magnetic field, and your pointer finger still points with the velocity, and we'll see that the force is into the page is into the page. And the way that we draw that is a dot with a circle around it. Okay, So at this moment the force would be into the page. Now if we had that same particle here traveling with a velocity in this direction, point our pointer finger that way and our middle finger in the same direction, my fingers are together. That shows me that they're parallel. So in this case here there is no force. Another interesting thing to look at would be what would happen if uh, we had a negative particle with a velocity in this direction. Now, because it's negative, it would give me a negative sign here next to the Q. So we can do everything just like we did before. We can point our pointer finger with the velocity, our middle finger with the magnetic field, and our thumb would be into the page. But because it's a negative particle, it's going to do opposite of that. So in this case, the force is out of the page. Force is out of the page. Force into the page is an X. I apologize for that. Force out of the page is a dot with a circle around it. <clears throat> now, 
for a wire, we look at the same thing. Let's say, let's say our magnetic field points in this direction. And let's say we have a wire, that blue, that has a current running in this direction now. This may hurt your hand a little bit, but if you point your pointer finger holding your hand like the, the diagram has, if you take your pointer finger and point it with the current, rotate your wrist to where your pointer finger still points in the direction of the current, now your middle finger points at the magnetic field, you'll see here that the force forces out of the page, and again, out of the page is a dot with a circle around it. Into the page is an X. So the force would be out of the page. Now we're going to look at some specific things about the magnetic force acting on a charged particle. So what we're using is the force is equal to Q times the velocity of my particle crossed with the magnetic field. All right. So that's my force is my thumb, my velocity is my pointer finger, my magnetic field is my middle finger. Now for charged particles um, we have an interesting thing. So let's say that the magnetic field is into the page. Into the page is X's, so we have a magnetic field pointing into the page. It's going to take a second to draw this. Now we use this particular quality to do mass spectrometers and early particle accelerators actually depending on this as well. So <clears throat> let's say this is a mass spectrometer. So we have a region where the magnetic field is into the page. We're going to take a positive particle. We're going to shoot it in here with some velocity that we happen to know. Now, if we look at the path, <clears throat> using our right-hand rule, point your pointer finger uh, to the right, keep your middle finger pointed to the middle of the page, what we see is the force acting on this particle as soon as it enters the magnetic field is up but it's going to turn a little bit and that's going to turn my particle so what we actually see when this particle goes in here is the particle traveling around a circular path in this case the force acts as a centripetal force Because we said this force was always perpendicular to this velocity, that's going to be a centripetal force. So in this case, I can say that the, uh, the force, magnetic force, is equal to the mass times the velocity squared over the radius of this thing. What this allows me to do is say, okay, QVB is equal to MV squared over R. What this allows me to do is if I know the charge and I know the velocity, I can find the mass of my particle based on the radius of this turn. Okay, this is a, this is a good thing to know how to do. We'll do some examples with that tomorrow. Um, likewise, if we were to take a negative particle, using our right hand rule, positive particle the force is up, a negative particle the force is down. So we see this thing turning in the opposite direction, but it's still going in a circular path. All particles in magnetic fields will travel, sorry, will travel in circular paths. There's one interesting kind of thing that goes along with this. It's still traveling in a circular path. Well, let's say let's say we have a magnetic field that points in this direction. That's my magnetic field. And let's say we have, just to be easy, a positively charged particle. But instead of moving with it or at exactly 90 degrees, the velocity of my charged particle <clears throat> isn't at 90 degrees or, or, or parallel to my magnetic field. Now, what I have is two components of my velocity. I have my parallel component, we'll call it V parallel. It's kind of hard to draw, but we have our perpendicular component, perpendicular. Now, this component will not change. 
So my particle is going to keep moving forward, but this particle, that part of it, the perpendicular part, up, is actually going to cause a force to go into the page. So what we're going to have is this thing spiraling, spiraling around the magnetic field. Still traveling forward, but going in sort of this corkscrew pattern around the magnetic field. Um, we get this because <clears throat> only the perpendicular part of velocity gets bent. The other part stays the same. So it still travels forward with this parallel component of velocity forward, but it tends to swirl around the magnetic field. Now the place we see this the most okay, is um, particles trapped, ions trapped in the Earth's magnetic field. <clears throat> this is what gives us the northern lights. Those particles can't get through the magnetic field, but they spiral around those magnetic field lines, um, and then they interact with the ionosphere to give us um, the northern lights. We're also going to look at some interesting things that current-carrying wires do. Um, so let's imagine we have a current-carrying wire that's shaped kind of like a loop. We have the current going in here through the loop. So the current goes this way at the top, uh, this direction over here, and this direction over here. Let's say that current carrying loop is in a magnetic field. This time we'll have that magnetic field. Sorry about those lines at the top. We'll have that magnetic field point out of the page. Okay, in this case, the magnetic field is out of the page. <clears throat> what we see, if we do our right-hand rule, and I'll let you figure this out on your own. We see a force on each one of these that wants to make the loop shrink. It's an interesting thing. If we reverse the magnetic field, it would, it would pull it apart. Now... Um, the truly useful part of this so we have the same current but this time let's say the magnetic field points this way points to the side now if we look at the top and the bottom do this in green the force on the top is zero because it's parallel the force on the bottom is zero because those two are parallel but this side the current down the magnetic field this way, the uh, the force is out of the page, and over here the force is into the page. And what that would do would cause this thing to want to spin. This is in fact how we get electric motors. We have a current carrying wire in a magnetic field that causes a torque on them. That's how every single electric motor works. So tomorrow in class you guys are going to get to play with a tiny electric motor. It's going to be a battery sitting on top of a magnet. And we're going to connect a wire from the top of the battery to the magnet on the bottom. And what we're going to see is that thing spin. And what I'm going to ask you to do is identify which end of my magnet is going to be north or south based on how this thing spins. Okay. And we'll talk a little bit more in class about what the magnetic field looks like around it. That's all we have for today.